During the First World War, about 6,000 men joined the Newfoundland Regiment. As they marched through the streets of St. John's and boarded the steamers that took them across the ocean, they said goodbye to their homes and their friends and families. About 1,300 soldiers never returned. They died on distant battlefields or in European hospitals. Others came home, but they had physical and emotional wounds that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. The impacts of the First World War on families in Newfoundland and Labrador were enormous. It separated children from their fathers, wives from their husbands, and parents from their sons. A century later, those effects are still being felt. This was a locket that my Uncle Frank brought back to my mother. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm touching a piece of history first of all, but I'm that much closer to my Uncle Frank, whom I never met. And, of course, to my mother, because Mom wore this quite often. Four of Brenda Mooney's uncles served with the Newfoundland Regiment during the war. It was her uncle Frank who brought this necklace back from France. He gave it to his little sister, Pauline. She was just 10 years old when the war broke out. Now it belongs to Pauline's daughter, Brenda. Frank Vaughn was 31 years old when he joined the Newfoundland Regiment. He was a leather tanner by trade, and he lived on Waterford Bridge Road with his wife Mary and their two children. Charles was about two and a half years old when his father left. Mary was just 11 months old. Frank signed up on September 9, 1914. He became one of the regiment's famous first 500 recruits. He may have been one of the first men in Newfoundland and Labrador to enlist, but he wasn't the first Vaughn. A younger brother, Oscar, had signed up two days earlier on September 7th. Oscar was 23 years old and still living at home with his parents on Leslie Street in St. John's. The two brothers trained together at Pleasantville in St. John's with the rest of the first 500. They went on foot marches, learned how to use bayonets and other weapons, they practiced marksmanship and skirmishing, and acquired the basic skills of being a soldier. On October 4, 1914, they left Newfoundland aboard the SS Florizel. They were sailing away from their families and away from the safety of their homes. Two months later, a third Vaughn brother decided to join the Newfoundland Regiment. Joseph was only 16 years old when he enlisted on December 23, 1914. But he told recruiters that he was actually 19. When the truth came out, Joseph convinced his parents to write him a letter of permission to go overseas. And then there were stories, of course, about um, Joe. He was closest in age to my mother. I think she was 10. Yes, he was 16 when he went to war. Falsified his age, of course. And um, she remembered him practicing. They, li they lived on um, Leslie Street. And he used to get the broomstick and hold it against his left shoulder and walk back and forth the dining room, uh, you know, practicing, uh, getting used to holding the gun on his left shoulder. I mean, here he was only a 16-year-old boy. Um, and I gather that his parents were reluctant f for him to go. And, uh, but I guess being a young boy, and I mean, so many men, especially three of his own brothers, were going to war and he wanted whether it was adventure, we, we'll never know. Joseph became part of the Newfoundland Regiment's second contingent. They left Newfoundland on February 3, 1915. The soldiers were bound for Europe and for an unknown future. It is likely that Joseph's parents were among the crowds waving the troops farewell. It's a parting that resonates with Brenda 100 years later. I, I guess you identify with with being a parent and having a young young sons going off to war. I mean, you know, it's just we know that we know the horrors of war now. They obviously, I don't think they they knew what they were getting into. They were all going off on the Florizel in October, and this was probably, in a sense, an adventure. But my God, when you hear of them building the trenches in the winter of 1915. And then the torrential rains and the trenches filling up with water and oh, it was it was a living hell. 
No wonder the men didn't want to talk about it when they came home. Those torrential rains poured down on the men when they were dug in at Suvla Bay on the Gallipoli Peninsula. The regiment arrived there at about 3 a.m. on September 20th, 1915. Among its 1,000 men were the three Vaughn brothers. They had entered the brutal world of trench warfare. A mere 50 meters separated the Newfoundland regiment's front lines from enemy trenches. Artillery fire was a constant threat, but there were other dangers too. After the rainy season began in October, the weather became a major problem. Sudden squalls drenched the men's clothing and flooded their trenches. The days remained hot, but the nights grew bitterly cold. The situation deteriorated on November 26th when a flood struck Suvla Bay. It was followed by a deep freeze. About 150 Newfoundlanders and Labradorians were hospitalized with severe frostbite. Among them were Oscar and Joseph. Both were evacuated from the trenches on December 15th. They were sent to Wandsworth Hospital in England. Frank survived Gallipoli and was there when the regiment withdrew in January. But bronchitis and asthma were recurring problems for him. His health appears to have kept him off the front lines over the next two years. It was a different story for Joseph. Young and resilient, he rebounded quickly from his injuries at Gallipoli and rejoined the regiment on June 20th, 1916. Eleven days later, he took part in the regiment's tragic advance at Beaumont Hamel. About 800 Newfoundlanders and Labradorians went over the top that morning. When roll call was taken the next day, only 68 men answered their names. 324 were killed, 386 were wounded. Among those injured was Joseph Vaughn. Gunshot wounds in both of his legs sent the young soldier to a hospital for a second time. Again he recovered, and again he was sent out to battle. On April 14, 1917, Joseph Vaughn was killed in action at Machi Le Preau. So there are just bits and pieces of what I remember my mother saying, that um, she recalled her mother moaning, like the Irish call it keening, moaning after poor, George, uh, poor Joe sorry, was killed in action. His body was never found. And uh, she would just go around the kitchen and say, poor Joe, poor Joe. And I remember my mother being very sad on Armistice Day. We always called it Armistice Day, you know, the uh, November the 11th. Um, she really grieved for the loss of her four brothers. Joseph's name, along with the names of all the regiment soldiers who have no known grave, is inscribed on memorial plaques at Beaumont Hamel in France and at Bowering Park in St. John's. Brenda was there when the memorial was unveiled in St. John's. And I went to that service. Again, I feel this is what my grandparents would want me to do, and especially my mother. And, you know, I saw the name Private Joseph Vaughan. And then it hit me, my gosh, you know, he's here, he's back home. It sounds a little, you know, but my mother loved the park. Had she lived to see her own brother's name on that plaque, it would have really brought a, a connection, you know. The beauty of the park, but yet the horrors of the war. But, um, you know, she would have been proud. On the same day that Joseph died, a fourth Vaughn brother became a prisoner of a war. Herbert Vaughn had joined the Newfoundland Regiment on May 11, 1916. He didn't make it overseas in time to fight at Beaumont Hamel, but he was there on April 14 when the regiment advanced at Machi Le Preau. Herbert was shot once in the left leg and again in his arm before Germans captured him. The severity of his wounds prompted his captors to send him to a hospital in Germany instead of a prisoner of a war camp. His leg was eventually amputated. In January of 1918, he was repatriated to England, and he arrived in Newfoundland that June. Herbert was the only Vaughn brother who survived the war. Health problems continued to plague Oscar and Frank after the wet and cold of Gallipoli. Both brothers returned to Newfoundland on sick furlough in June of 1917. Oscar was admitted to a convalescent hospital known as Jensen Camp. He died there on July 4, 1917. Frank continued to serve with the regiment's headquarters in St. John's, but he fell ill in the spring of 1918 and died on May 22nd. 
Herbert returned home the next month. The war haunted him for the rest of his life. Although Brenda never met her four uncles, she thinks of them often. One hundred years later, she is preserving their memory in an ambitious and creative project. Quilters from across the province have contributed 250 quilt blocks to the Cabot Quilters Guild. And those blocks have been combined to create 17 beautiful quilts, as well as one book called Piece by Piece. Each block tells a story connected to the war. Some profile soldiers and nurses, others shine a light on the home front. Brenda's block is called the Fighting Vaughn Brothers. And I felt right from day one, I owe it to my uncles to do whatever I can to honor their memory. The, the main thing is it's really brought it alive, you know. We're talking a hundred years ago, and something that I really had no connection with other than my mother's brief comments uh, about it and her, her sadness and Armistice Day. And, but now, with all the emphasis on honoring the war dead, uh, I made it a point to, in two, two years ago to go to the War Memorial, and I'm, I will go as long as I can. And I, I laid a wreath that morning in honor of my four uncles. And so I will certainly be doing my part to keep their memory alive. And hopefully my children will see my interest and they, they will do the same. <laughs> 